There's nothing confirmed about Laylat al-Isra, nothing. And that's why we don't, there's no ibadah that is specific to these nights in the Sunnah. That's true. And if people say there is, it becomes a bid'ah. That is a bid'ah, to introduce uh, things that aren't uh, from the religion into the religion. So, but having said that, the ulama do um, take a blessing from the 27th of Rajab generally. I mean, a lot of the ulama say it's a good night um, because m the majority of ulama do think that it is the night of the Isra, but Imam Nawawi did not. So even to say by Kesh or something that it's this night, I don't think. Um, Imam Nawawi was one of the great awliya of our tradition, but he, he did not uh, agree with that opinion. There's nothing confirmed. But generally it is the night, if you look on Muslim calendars, it's the night that they put for the night of the Isra. And so uh, it's, it's a good night to uh, remember the Isra just generally. The, um, the, uh, the Prophet ﷺ, if you look at what happened right before the Isra, right before the Isra was probably the most difficult time of the Prophet's life, you know, They say that the, uh, you know, the darkest hour is the one right before dawn. The, uh, the Prophet ﷺ had gone to Ta'if and um, he had been rejected by the people of Ta'if. But worse than that, they, they really humiliated him. I mean, they can't, you can't humiliate in reality uh, uh, dignified people. You know, it's not, but but they, they attempted to humiliate him because humiliation is really an internal experience more than, I mean, somebody can, can uh, can denigrate you, um, but but humiliation is something you experience. I was so humiliated, you know. People, that's what they say, you know. So when you say he humiliated me, it's really you're saying he allowed. I allowed myself to be humiliated by him, because people can't really humiliate you. They they can be disrespectful, but it says more about them than it does about you in reality. Uh, so. You can allow yourself to be humiliated. Now the Prophet ﷺ also said, al A believer shouldn't ever humiliate himself. And what uh, Sidi Ahmed Zarruq said that it meant, uh, it meant opposing government, you know, like, like rebels and things like that. I and mean, that's how he interpreted it. Because he said, when you do that and then they capture you and they put you in shackles and they do all, you, you, you've become humiliated. But he, what Ahmed Zarruq, the Prophet said, Al-Mu'minu la yudhillu nafsahu. The believer doesn't humiliate himself. Which really means that, that it, it's you that's humiliating yourself. It's not, it's not somebody else. It's you that's doing it. But you can cause yourself to be humiliated by doing stupid things. So what the Prophet ﷺ was doing was the most honorable of things. There was nothing dishonorable about it and there was nothing that should have warranted what happened to him. Whereas when you go against a government for instance uh, and oppose them, you've basically done something that justifies their response because that's how they're going to respond. They're going to respond by humiliating you. So in essence you've humiliated yourself by putting yourself into a position like that. So when, when the Prophet ﷺ went to Ta'if, he was basically looking for uh, people to, to give him uh, protection so that he could do his da'wah. And, uh, and they, they, didn't, they didn't respond. But worse than that, they sent the, uh, the servants out uh, to throw rocks at him. Some of the children threw rocks at him. And uh, he actually had, you know, his feet were bloodied. Uh, from that and he, he was very distressed about it because it, it was like his last hila. it was his last strategy that's that that was he was doing the asbab even though his trust was completely with Allah he was doing the asbab and that's why his dua is so interesting because well there's two things that are interesting one is um, who comes to him at that time when he when he goes to the the he's sitting under the tree who comes to him the christian man adas and uh, nanawi and where was he from because he asked him where are you from what did he say he he said he was from ninawa and and uh, the prophet said him said uh, that's the city of the the blessed man uh, yunus ibn matta 
Now, what's interesting about that? Because this is, you know, the, these are the things that, that God plans. I mean, what's interesting about that story? I mean, what would be interesting about a man from Nineveh coming to the Prophet ﷺ at that point? Because well, what's the story of Nineveh? What's the story of Nineveh? It's interesting because they disbelieved in him, but he gets fed up. See, Eunice, Jonah, basically writes them off and says, you know, these people, there's no real hope for them. And he goes and then he, he gets on the ship and then there's a storm and they throw lots and they throw him over. And then the whale comes. And, but the, the point of that story is that he was in the same situation. The prophet was in the situation of Yunus, Ibn Umetta. Now what happens with Yunus in the belly? He's like, his realization is, this is all from God. <laughs> I, like I had my plan, but God had his plan. Because he was trying to get on the boat and get, but it didn't work out the way he thought in his mind it was going to work out. And he ends up in the belly of the, of the whale and praising God, right? Now, who does he blame? Does he blame the people of Nineveh? He's in the belly of the whale. Oh, Allah, look what they've done to me. Destroy these people, right? I mean, does he do that? Does, like, he, does he blame the people? What's he say? He blames himself. It's so interesting. <laughs> you know, it's like Muslims tend to, I don't know what happened, but at, at a certain point they stopped reading these stories correctly or something. But he blames himself and he says, you know, if you don't help me, I'm finished. So that the fact that a man from the city of, of Nineveh comes to the Prophet at that time is very symbolic. And the Prophet ﷺ says the, his famous du'a, where, where he, he says to Allah, you are the Lord of the oppressed. And uh, he said, I don't have any strategy, you know, qallat hilati. I don't really have a strategy uh, to, to do it. You know, I've, tr I've tried everything that I can. But then he says, you know, I don't know who you're going to send me to. Is it an enemy? that will treat me horribly or some stranger that doesn't know who I am there's no warmth there's no help coming from them um, and but then he says you know but if you're pleased with me you know if you're pleased with me then I don't care what you do to me as long as you're pleased with me in other words I don't Whatever the circumstances you put me in, I'm not going to complain about them as long as you're... And then he said, وَالْعَافِيَةُ أَوْسَعُ You know, the, the well-being is easier for me. It's easier to be in a situation where you're not in that constriction and, and difficulties. But what's interesting about that is um, he said, you know, that I... أَشْكُوا إِلَيْكَ هَوَانِي عَلَى النَّاسِ you know, I complain to you my insignificance in the eyes of the people. He didn't complain about how they treated him. He, he complained about his, the fact that he didn't, you know, that I'm in this situation where they're not respecting me. And, and he all, if you look at that, he didn't complain about the people. It's a very interesting, it's very similar to what, uh, Jonah did, and one of the things the Prophet said, لا تفضلوني على الأنبياء Do not prefer me over other prophets. And in a riwayah he said, لا تفضلوني على Yunus ibn Metta Don't prefer me over Jonah. Right? Don't prefer me over Jonah. Which is from his humility and what it means is do not prefer the Prophet in any way that diminishes from the other prophets. That, that's what it means. It's also from his humility because he said, I am the best of the children of Adam and I'm not boasting. In other words, this is not something that I really want to tell you about me, but it's something that I was commanded to tell you.